Okay. So, ah, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, this talk is, uh, first of all, uh, so I'm the only one that blocked you from getting to lunch, so I try to be brief. And this talk, I'm not sure it's, it's to be a bit different from the talks that you've heard so far. I'm not sure it's a written game theory, but it's electronic commerce at least. And the title of this is uh, Mechanisms for Multi-Level Marketing. Uh, it, uh, it's a joint work uh, basically with uh, all of the people that, some of the people that are my colleagues at the Microsoft Israel RD Center, some of them are doing basic research, some of them are part of the innovation labs. This particular uh, project is, has many things which are both theoretical and practical that we'll not talk about. We'll talk about something very concrete. And this particular paper is a joint work with Yuval Emek, now TTH, Walter Reedy, who is one of the leaders in the Microsoft uh, Innovation Labs, uh, and Aviv Zohar, who is now in, uh, uh, in Microsoft Research uh, uh, SVC. So, uh, what is the setting that we talk about? I'll do many things that, that you'll do it like abusing notations and stuff like that, but I, I like to present some results and theorems. And I'll be able, more than happy to talk about more details about practical and less practical things. Uh, but I'd like to describe the setting. So think about the idea that we like to sell an information good over a social network. And the information good can be anything. It can be or some iPhone applications. It can be uh, even better, some Xbox games. Uh, it can be anything. And the seller's dream that always exists, basically, and now it just uh, amplified in the recent years, is the idea of basically viral marketing. Invest a particular percentage of your income in rewarding good buyers that will be credited for bringing many other buyers. So if you are good in this, you can make a lot of money, you can be, have profit, and you basically like to introduce these affiliates or marketeers or middlemen into the picture, into the economic setting. So there are many ways in sense to think about that. In order to have something concrete, this is a theory topic, and I'd like to, that you have in mind a possible implementation that you don't need a deal with Facebook in order to implement. And this is something very simple that should be in your mind when we talk about the mathematical stuff, which we call identified links. So upon buying a product, a user U obtains a link to the product section in the purchase key side, some link. And the link encodes basically the idea of this user. And now it can be installed in your page, in its blog, or sent by email or SMS, whatever this user likes to do. And now other users can buy the product by clicking on use link. So, and then new links are generated. And what is kept here is the purchasing site keeps track of who clicked whose link. So basically there is some marketplace that really can keep track on this kind of thing, which is very simple. It, it can be implemented very, very simply. Uh, the tricky point, of course, is to notice that this induced what we'll call in the rest of the talk, the purchasing tree. So what is the purchasing tree? The root is the purchasing site of the seller. And now, basically, node V is a child of node U if user V bought the product by clicking user U's link. Life is more complicated because you can recommend things and, um, and people will not buy. But here it's something that the one that clicked is the one that really uh, bought this uh, product and it gets to be the, you know, uh, basically uh, denoted in this tree. So, uh, so basically, user you should be credited for bringing her descendants in the tree. And what will focus of our talk today is about the rewarding mechanism. That turns out to be very tricky. Suppose that the price of a product is $2 and that the seller is willing to spend, let's say, up to $1 out of it on rewards. So think about it as there are end buyers, there are at most end dollars are spent on rewards. So the focus of our research project is how much reward should each user receive? 
And this depends, of course, on the purchasing tree. And we look for rewarding mechanisms that actually people will use. So it should be fair, easy to implement, and buyers have to incentive to promote a good product, and all of this good stuff. So let's think of a failed attempt. This started by saying, OK, this guy, Moshe, tells us about game theory. So there is a game. Let's say how to do that. And you can think there is a cooperative game involved. There is a Shapley value that can you use. But it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'll just tell you why these are failed attempts. Uh, if you like, for example, to split the $1 equally among all ancestors of a new buyer in T, which is basically the Shapley value, formally the Shapley value, uh, you get things like uh, the following one. Users prefer to have small depths in the tree. In the sense, if you need to share something with all of the people on your path, then you'd like your path to be short. So in a sense, you share future rewards with less nodes, so people may, worry, may, may wait for a better offer instead of buying the product right away. Many strange things can happen. Again, I don't like to attack it, but you know, it's, it's both in theory and practice there are problems with such just copying from some, somewhere else. So basically, now there are things that are well agreed. For example, that any reasonable rewarding mechanism should satisfy that the position of U in T does not affect T of U. What is important is that our view, which is the reward of U, is uniquely determined by the tree originating from this guy. So what we'll offer now is something that if I'll have at the end two minutes, I'll convince you, which looks like the most theoretical one and turns out to be one of the things that theory can really bring to practice, which is the axiomatic approach. What is the axiomatic approach? Basically, we'd like to identify a minimal set of requirements that the rewarding mechanism should satisfy. If you like to play a practitioner, just call it a spec. And characterize the collection of rewarding mechanisms that satisfies these requirements. Just write some good requirements. The idea here, and we'll spend time on that again, we are in this conference, we'll not spend time on that, on that. That's something huge, in a sense. It's huge because if you talk really, I'm gonna say it in a second, so if you talk with practitioners, even research that work in practice, they, they say, okay, what is all of this? There are users and all that we can do is see how the user will behave, we'll do some A-B testing and stuff like that. The thing the point is, what you should A be testing what? What, what you should experiment with it? You need to restrict the set of mechanisms that you use, and the axiomatic approach fits in very, very nicely into that, if we have time to talk about this. So the idea is, the question is, what is a reasonable mechanism, rewarding mechanism? So the thing that I'll say now will be stated as if they're axioms, but in fact they are taken as the definition of a rewarding mechanism, because it's well agreed in discussions. One of them is the subtree constraint. We want the reward to depend on descendants, not on the position in T. This is what we mentioned before. And there are two other ones, budget constraint. The seller is willing to spend at most a certain fraction, let's call it pi, of her budget on referrals. So let's say that the, the price of the product is some fee. We normalize so that pi fee equals one. So think about it, you're willing to spend on each product purchase at most one dollar. Just normalize. And the other thing is a tricky thing that a lot of discussions have taken place in, not just now, places, many places about that, that say, let's build incentives to guys. So incentives are not modeled here formally, they will be modeled later, soon we'll get to it. But the idea here is to have what we call unbounded reward constraint. What we mean by that, that there is shown, should be no limit to the rewards one can potentially receive even under the assumption that each user has a limited circle, circle of friends. So if, of course, if you have zillions of friends, you can have something unbounded, but if you just, you like to tell the person, just bring your two friends, and still it will be, grow. Uh, 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 you can really, it, it's basically unbounded. So it's a, a mathematician way to say, uh, you know, this is, should be some of the, uh, the, the wrong mechanism should be of that kind. So, so what is this axiomatic approach? Now we'd like, assuming that this is the rewarding mechanism, we'd like to start to state certain properties. Some of them, we start to try that it will be not less arguable, but basically, my, our hope is for some representation theory that say, look, if you get this, like by magic, your kind of mechanism should be of a particular kind. So let's think about uh, three of them. 
Here are things that are more arguable, and we'll argue about them later. The first one of them are well accepted, which I call DLD, and now stay with me. It's the left depth level dependence. What do you mean by that? What really matters is the number of descendants on each depth level. So if you have two sons and three grandsons, that should determine your, basically your, your uh, reward. So, uh, so this means that the reward for you is uniquely determined by the number of descendants of you on each depth level. Sounds natural, I think. Another thing is additivity. That perhaps may sound less natural, but again, it can be easily argued for. Again, it's written here. I really abuse the notation. I write it very simply. So it means if you brought a subtree t, a tree of descendants, and you got a reward of t for that, and if there is a joint subtree that you can bring, t prime, that you got a reward r t o prime for that, if in this situation you get r t and r t o prime, then if, if you manage to get the union of t and, d and t prime, you should get the reward of t and t prime. So I just make a, a, a short notice about that. This is not just for convenience. In fact, it's part of the way to, to, to avoid collusions, because what is, we call it a particular kind of split. If this is not required, then basically there will be temptation to people to collude and join into one force or to split themselves into two. We'll talk about these splits more later. But these are simple splits, are like, you know, simple splits already can be done if you don't require this kind of thing. So this is additivity. And the third thing, we'll mention only three axioms. Child dependence. The reward for you can be calculated from the children's reward. So it means if you tell me what are your children's reward, not only what the children, just the reward that has been, uh, that they will get, you can also already compute the reward of this guy, you. Of course, this makes things also easy to implement. So we'd like to start with the characterization. So again, a disclaimer, we have several characterizations, several kind of things. I'd like to illustrate this approach, I'll present to you one of them, and then I'll say some things about things which are more complicated. So, so what is the goal? So bear with me. Now we have three like requirements, DLD, additivity, and child dependence, and we'd like to characterize the collection of mechanisms to satisfy the three of them. So what is nice when doing the axiomatic approach, again, I'm selling something that perhaps is not need to sell here, but it's really nice. You start with two of these axioms, and suddenly there is something else to come to mind, which makes things even nicer. Here is another property, which we call summing contribution. What is summing contribution? It means there exists a sequence, CK, such that each new buyer contributes some constant, CK, to its case ancestor. Uh, in, in T. And the reward is just the sum of, of all descendants of this contribution. So what is this? This means the situation is very simple. For your son, let's say you get uh, C1. For a grandson, you get a C2. If you have two sons and three grandsons, it's just two C1 plus C, three C2. Very naive, very easy to implement. And the lemma, the first lemma that we prove is that uh, some contribution holds if and only if the depth level dependence plus additivity hold. So, by the way, how much time do I have? I lost the... Uh, 12 more minutes, wow. Oh. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> good to ask. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, so, we have a proof of that. This was the proof that I wanted to illustrate one. Uh, I'll do another. Uh, so, uh, so we showed <laughs> that some contributions hold if and only if depth level dependence and additivity holds. Again, DLD, depth level dependence, one direction is easy, right? It's easy to see that, uh, that if you have something that is uh, basically uh, summing contributions, then it's by definition depth level dependence and additivity holds. The other direction is trickier, it's, it's proof by induction, no big, uh, 
big thing here. I just, I just wanted, wanted to illustrate this. I like to illustrate the other part. What he's saying? No, it's not, it doesn't apply child dependence. Uh, again, it's uh, okay. But but we'd like to look to the interest more into stuff. Uh, uh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, let's forget about this for a minute. It's, it's not the important. Thing. You get many things for free. Yeah. So summing contribution again is characterized by a sequence CK, and now comes the following lemma that will give us the following the, 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 the interesting structure. I'd like to illustrate the sketch of proof of it. The idea is basically that if you take the summing contribution and add to a charge dependence, in fact, you get exactly the geo geometric progressions. What are geometric progressions? So we have parameters A and B and some normalization. So think about it as you pay half to your son, quarter to your grandson, and so on. So, um, so this is what you get. So how basically you go to prove something like that? So one direction is easy. If each node contributes uh, 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 a k to the power of k times b, then the reward of the node u uh, can be written as r of u as, as, as something that depends only on your child. So the interesting part is how you go and prove something like if you have summing contributions plus child uh, dependence, how you get it is just a geometric progression. So let's illustrate this. Just the, one direction, again, is easy. The other direction needs more work. I'd like to illustrate to you a particular thing. Just for simplicity, think about the, the, the CK, is what you get for your K's uh, uh, descendants, as a rational number, XK over YK. So what happens now is, we show that xk over yk squared is exactly xk over y minus k1 times xk plus 1 over yk plus 1, which makes the ck is a geometric mean of ck minus 1 and ck plus 1, and therefore it's a geometric progression. How these kind of proofs are done, just the one that like to join the community of <laughs> doing that. So basically, we need to construct interesting trees. So you construct a tree with a particular structure, so here there is a particular depth and a particular number of leaves. And you just take care that the reward here will be identical. So here the reward in T1 and the reward in T2 are the same. They have been built like that. And then what does it mean, child dependence? Child dependence means that if you add another node that just link only to the T1 and another node that link only to T2, by child dependence, the reward should be identical. And this can be built in a way that if you write it down, you get the inequality uh, that you want. So basically, um, uh, this is like the first presentation. And there are many free requirements to get out of that, which means you know, many other things that satisfy. We don't, you know, there are many other things that satisfy monotonicity uh, that is written here that we get for free. Other things that we get for free. Yeah. But I'd like to use the, 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 the time that I have now in order, in order to dig into this. This is an example of an axiomatization. We wanted to have a reward mechanism. If you believe this, you have basically, the, the, this is the mechanism that we need to use. We have this representation theorem. But life is not that simple. And most of the time, I must admit, technically has been uh, devoted to one axiom with two flavors which is a real pain to, uh, especially in practice, but of course, to this community, it can be something that will connect us back to game theory kind of stuff. And this is the strategic split, or the strategic sequential split. So we would have wanted that you will not have incentives to split into several bias. You will not have Sibyl attacks. And in fact, under geometric progression, it's easy to see that Sibyl attacks are possible. In fact, one can have a very simple corollary that there is no rewarding mechanism that satisfies uh, depth level dependence and activity and child dependence and split. Let's, let's talk about this split, what it means. So think about this node, this root. And it basically links to eight guys uh, with subtrees originating from them. Now, basically, this guy can very easily, not need to be a master for that, create many replica. So what is this replica? This is something that I can buy the product sell to myself. 
I can do various kind of things, create identities, but this is self-trauma generic. At the end, these guys, these poor guys, they buy for me or for a replica. We'll talk about this, if there are limitations of that. But this is the general basic of a split. A real problem, by the way. A real problem, real realistic problem, which is the several replica. So why it's problem? It start, it, 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 you can create a whole disaster. See, I try to create the minimal disaster. So if you have eight guys here, and you, you have this chanting that pays half to your son and quarter to your grandson, then basically, so your, your reward will be $4 with his eight sons. But now you just bought something and then you recommend to yourself, with, to your own right identity in the sense on Facebook, you put it there, you do the calculation and already gain, even if you paid for the product. Of course, you paid already for the product. So, still just looking at the numbers. <laughs> so, so basically, what is written here, you pay $2, basically, let's say, for uh, buying the, uh, the product, but you get half back because you recommended. And then you have the computation. In fact, this is a very narrow. Think about this. What is it, eight? Who knows? Not one. No, no, no. This, are, this, is, this is the... No, no. This, this guys get half for each guy that he recommended. So the blue... These guys are these naive guys that because of them you are paid. No, no, no. This guy, this guy is paid half. This guy is paid quarter. And this guy and this guy are both of you are you. And you bought the product, so you get half for this, you get quarter for each one of this, which is geometric mechanism, for example. Okay? Okay? So, uh, so and, and rewards can be very big. In fact, the big, split, the big issue is, the big conversation is back, uh, whether we have these weak splits or strong splits. What does it mean? In a split, a node is replaced by several replica. And each node in the replica buys the product, potentially for another node in the replica. That's quite severe, but people are crazy, they can do that. On the other hand, people say, look, my identity in Facebook is clear. No one will buy from the fake identity. This is called weak split, which means I can create things and buy and sell myself. And if the reward mechanism is crazy, I can gain from that. But the purchase will be done also for my right identity. This is called weak split. In fact, first of all, Previously, you have seen the weak split, and the notion is split proof mechanism is resistant to splits, and weak split, split, weak split proof mechanism resistance to weak splits. So, I'll share with you three results. <laughs> and now I'll go quick because the results are less trivial. Uh, so, this says the following First of all, for weak split, there are good news. The geometric mechanisms can be adapted to the weak split proof. Uh, uh, thing, while still satisfying what we call the rewarding mechanism, unbounded reward, budget constraint, and subtree dependence. Basically, this says that the largest subtree of a node is ignored with computing the reward. I need to say what is the largest subtree. Uh, it's the largest reward subtree. There are several versions that appear in our paper, but the idea is it's a relatively simple, very local change to our mechanism that will make it a uh, uh, weak split proof. A lot, a lot of, of effort, effort, and almost uh, <laughs> the whole here, has been spent on dealing with split and with a reasonable algorithm to implement it. I'm not sure that users will you know, use it, but here is the, how we deal with general splits. The idea here is as follows. There is a certain base reward mechanism that says the following. Given a tree T obtained originating in X, the reward in X will be the maximal height of a perfect binary tree originating in X embedded in the tree. So we look at the perfect binary tree of the highest, you know, the, the highest basically uh, uh, perfect binary tree uh, in this, uh, in, in the tree originated from X. And we pay according to this depth. But this doesn't mean, of course, that the guy cannot cheat. So the mechanism in fact do a simulation of the best split for the guy. So given a tree originating from a node X, the reward to x is according to the height of the best split he can do when the reward is according to the base mechanism. So this provides a, a, a split proof mechanism satisfying also budget constraint and unbounded potential reward as needed. 
and we omit here the details. So the idea is basically we can have mechanisms to deal that are feasible and uh, well-defined. We all the mechanisms to deal with split, with weak split, but there are bad news also to be added to that. There is some impossibility that says that the reward mechanism is satisfied even weak split proof cannot guarantee a node a fixed fraction alpha even of the reward of its least rewarded child. So if you remember that I mentioned that you can ignore one of the child, that's not an accident. So you can, uh, there is a real problem here of what you can guarantee. So I'll, 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 I'll summarize and then I'll uh, add uh, one more thing that I'd like to share. Okay? So, uh, so here we dealt with splits. There are other issues that come across. But the summary for that is the goal is to design a reward mechanism for social distribution information goods. This is for us was something which was like in the desert. We want, so how it goes, how we get into that. We have around many people that do many experiments. What we offer is the axiomatic approach. It turns out that this can get somewhere uh, without asking strange kind of axioms. In particular, we have shown that the geometric progression family of mechanism uniquely satisfies all three requirements. And here we dealt with splits. I'll be happy, more than happy to talk with you more about that. So I cannot resist to say one minute about the agenda that basically I feel part of it in the last eight years, typically uh, talking with people in industry about that, but I'd like to share with you if it's not obvious. There are really major internet applications that call for help, internet slash mobile, whatever. Ranking systems, trust systems, recommendation systems that appear everywhere in search, reputation mechanisms, social networks. I talk especially about the emerging kind of things, not the thing that we already know that works. And in a sense, to be honest, Again, as someone that did, in many cases, to defend theory, no systematic rigorous mathematical evaluation in many cases. So many sophisticated things. So one of the things that I notice, I share with you, is so credits for ranking, credits for, <laughs> for many things you invented, very new things. For example, I like to invent the opinions.com that comes with interesting trust systems, wanted to, to have things. In many cases, we ask, what is the right model? What is a good system? And it turns out that when we ask the question, how do you evaluate existing system or in, uh, find novel ones, one of the good answers is this axiomatic approach. Again, in previous work, we dealt with this as an extension of classical social choice. But here, it's not social choice. It's something that asks questions that are typically held in cooperative game theory. It turns out that in many cases, you start and say, look, what will be the right axioms for this kind of system that we have? And it gets you quite a bit. Now, what is nice is that it's theory. On the other hand, it's really suggesting that someone can play with it. Um, so that was my two cents about uh, the axiomatic approaches look very theoretical in our world when I wear the game theory hat, while in the other hat, it suddenly become the more practical stuff. And here we talked about, in fact, this was part of this agenda to deal with incentives and recommendation systems uh, that we started to talk with. So, so that's, that's it. it. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, know, I know about the work. Again, uh, there are several systems. This was very successful work. Yeah, they do the some flavor of a geometric reward mechanism. The others that use, uh, by the way, in practice, there are some, uh, not people, uh, not say, in any sense of status. Amazon is, is, is playing with many things. Some of them are, are geometric, some are not geometric. At the, and this talk about the MIT guys. but. Uh, the main issue here is this kind of mechanism, some of them are really geometric, some are others. The aim here was worth trying to characterize where we need to go. Uh, let me be, again, because you said that, there are many aspects for that. For example, you need to be careful in this mechanism, this was part of the talk, whether you talk about pyramid schemes or not, whether it's legal or not. There are many other issues that come into the play here that, it's, uh, that should be taken into account. People care about that. Uh, Amazon mechanisms try to avoid that in particular ways. 
but for, for the call question, yes, it's, they use some form of geometric mechanism. Some of the most successful pyramid schemes that are not like that because they are not for purchase, but for commendations are geometric ones. So we didn't invent the geometric uh, progression mechanisms. Yeah. So now uh, we we'll take a lunch break. Uh, we convene at 2.30. Lunch is at a place called uh, Belgium House. It's about a five minute walk within campus. And the way you get there is by following people with this uh, teacher. <laughs>